Hey everyone, today's video is going to be September favorites. Um, I don't know about you, but September just went by in the blink of an eye for me. Um, it seems like it's been going that way the last couple of years, that time has just been going by so fast. I don't know why, but anyway, um, let's get right into it. I'm just going to, I've got a bunch of things sitting out in front of me. I'm just going to grab things at random here. September favorites, I would have to say that um, my MAC palettes that I just got. Depotting all my eyeshadows and putting them in palettes has been a really um, great idea because now I can just put them right out on the table in like one of those office file things that I showed you and having them all in the palettes just makes it so much easier and more fun to use. Um, it's funny because I never wanted them in palettes before. I didn't think I would like it for some reason and I really do love having them in palettes. And the MAC eyeshadows themselves too. I've been consistently grabbing for my MAC eyeshadows um, and I would have to say that I definitely love my MAC eyeshadows more than any other eyeshadows that I own. I have a lot of different brands, but I really like the MAC ones. Um, and Burt's Bees Lip Balm with Peppermint Oil. I've been using this a lot lately. Um, before, I was always using the EOS Lip Balm, but I have to say that I think this is more moisturizing and my lips stay moister longer. Um, and it's especially important because I just bought that MAC Pro Long Wear lipstick and that and some of the other MAC lipsticks I have have a tendency to dry out your lips a little bit. So it's really important that you have a good moisturizing lip balm to start with. This, um, you see me show it in every single one of my videos and I'm really going to miss it when it's gone. And it is almost gone. I've definitely hit pan on it. But that is the L'Oreal Studio Secrets Magic Perfecting Base. This makes your foundation go on so nice and smooth and it gives your face that like barrier between the foundation and your skin and it's a really good product and I'm gonna miss it. Um, and for those of you that are new to my channel I'm gonna miss it because I don't buy products anymore from companies that test on animals, so won't be repurchasing, but really, really like this, and I'm going to miss it. Uh, my new MAC Pro Longwear Foundation and Concealer, really, really loving this stuff, and um, the trick with this is you have to moisturize your face with really good, because otherwise it can be drying, and you have to put it on quickly because it dries, uh, the product itself also dries very fast, so you have to put it on fast, otherwise you won't be able to blend it out well. But I really, really like this. And um, somebody was reminding me uh, in the comment section the other day, I think it might have even been yesterday, how I used to use these MAC um, powders that, that come in the pretty containers. This one happens to be from the Dame Edma collection. Um, and I'm wearing all these things, unless I, unless I state otherwise, I'm wearing all these things that I'm showing you today, by the way. Um, this one is called Spectacle, and it's a highlight powder. And I think... I hit pan on this a while ago, but then I had gotten away from it. I'm using it as a setting powder instead of a highlighter, and I like the way it makes my face, like, sort of the whole thing glow a little bit. Um, when it comes to these MAC highlight powders or beauty powders or anything like that, you kind of have to go by what the color is as to what you're going to use it for because it's not always obvious what the best thing is to use. It depends a lot of times just on what the product is versus your skin color, really. Um, blush, I have to say, Nars Orgasm. Um, I always do say that. It's my all-time favorite blush. And again, just like with the L'Oreal thing, I'm going to miss this when it's gone because this is 
No, it's just owned by Shiseido. Shiseido tests on animals, so I don't know. <laughs> I Some of you had recommended um, a couple of dupes for me for the NARS Orgasm, so. But I haven't even hit pan on this, so once I hit pan, I think then I'll start trying out some of those dupes. The other blush that I've been using a lot, uh, which I actually have on today, is MAC On A Mission. This is from the Style Warriors collection. I had found this at a CCO, and um, I've been wearing a lot of purple makeup this month, eyeshadow, blush, lipstick, everything. So this is the only purple blush that I own, unless you count the um, Azalea Blossom from the Spring Color Forecast, because that one is pink on the top and purple on the bottom but it's kind of hard to get your brush just in the purple so I usually just swirl that out but um, yeah I really like this blush it's a very pretty shade of purple I think um, as far as uh, eyeliners I've been really enjoying this new Bobbi Brown gel eyeliner I got but I'm still definitely going to use my MAC Black Track Fluid line I've been really enjoying the gel eyeliners specifically. I have a whole drawer full of pencil eyeliners that, you know, that's what I pretty much used my whole life until I just started trying the gel ones, which I really like. Um, speaking of purple, I've been really getting into the purple lipsticks lately. The one that I'm wearing is the new Pro MAC Pro Long Wear Lip Cream in Goes and Goes. But I've also been reaching for all my other purple lipsticks a lot too. Um, this I like this one, but the downside to these this new formula is you have to use a lip liner with them, otherwise it will bleed. And so my solution for that is uh, the Revlon Clear Lip Liner. Somebody had asked me about this recently that they had looked for it and they couldn't find it, and it is discontinued. I'm sorry to say because. This is just the perfect solution because you can't possibly have a lip liner that's the right color for every lipstick that you own if you have a lot of lipsticks. So this was the perfect solution. Um, I don't know if any other companies make a clear lip liner, but um, I still have a lot of this left. So when that is gone, I'm sure I'll be on the hunt for a clear lip liner too. Mascara, I have to say that the Maybelline, the Falsies, that this is a really great mascara. And again, I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to miss this when it's gone because it's made by Maybelline, yada, yada, yada. But this is a really good mascara. But I have so many other mascaras that are getting neglected because of this one. But um, yeah, I would say... Most of the time, maybe six out of seven days out of the week, I always grab for this because it is a really good mascara. And um, as far as eye primers goes, um, I have been using my Urban Decay Primer Potion a lot lately, but... Sorry. <laughs> um, I also really like the Cliché Cosmetics Eyeshadow Primer. Um... But I don't use it that much because, this is this is kind of stupid, but I don't use it much because I don't want to run out of it. <laughs> and th the reason why I say that is because you can only get this through the website. Well, hopefully I found a dupe for this today um, that you can buy in a store. I just picked this up a few minutes ago, and this is the NYX eyeshadow base, and it's white. The Cliché Cosmetics one is like an off-white or a beige. The NYX one is like pure white. And so um, what I'm thinking is, even though I just got this MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, I really like it, but it's kind of expensive. So I was thinking maybe if there was a day that I was just going to stay home and not go anywhere or not film or whatever, that this might also be good for um, under eye circles. I don't know, I'd have to test it out. It might be too shockingly white. Maybe I could put that on and then put like foundation over it. But anyways, um, I can't wait to try this as an eyeshadow base was my point. <laughs> because I'm hoping that it will be a dupe of the Cliché Cosmetics. And then um, for nail polishes, 
this month I have been consistently reaching for Rimmel Lasting Finish Pro in Steel Gray, OPI in You Don't Know Jacques, and Chanel Paradoxal. These are the three. I have a lot of nail polishes, but these are the three when fall rolls around. Well, this, this one is new for me. I bought this, you know, within the last month. But these two here, when fall rolls around, I always grab for these. I bought the Rimmel one last year, and the You Don't Know Jacques, I'm not sure if I've had that for one year or two years, but it's amazing because, you know, you keep using it and using it, but yet the level never seems to go down. It's like the endless bottle. But, um, yeah, those are the three colors that I definitely use the most in September. And then I was thinking today when I was painting my nails, because I have the Paradoxal on right now, um, I was going to be going out with my mom, so I was in a hurry. So I wanted to just do my nails fast, so I was going to skip the base coat. And the very first nail that I painted, the polish wasn't going on nicely like it normally does and that's when I realized just how awesome this orally rubberized uh, base coat is it just makes any polish you use it doesn't have to be Chanel it can be a 99 cent bottle of essence nail polish but no matter what you use it makes the nail polish just glide right on and and uh, I think a lot of times because I use this um, I, I can get away with using less coats of polish because it seems to make the polish more opaque by having this under it. And of course, um, I also always use the uh, Seche V top coat because that, that stuff is awesome too because it's a good top coat but it also is like a nail hardener so whatever you put on for layers underneath it's going to harden the polish and make it dry really fast. And I like to always include one thing in my favorites that is non-makeup related. And this month I'm going to show and talk about coffee. I love coffee. Um, I especially love Starbucks. Unfortunately, because I live on the East Coast, we don't really have that many Starbucks. Um, this is Dunkin' Donuts land. This is where Dunkin' Donuts originated in New England. So unfortunately, we have a Dunkin' Donuts on every block. But I'm a Starbucks girl, and um, we don't have that many of those. So we we do go out for Starbucks when we can or when we can find one. But for the most part, we make it at home. So we just buy the beans and grind it ourselves, and it's it's pretty darn good. It's pretty close to you know having it like what they give you at the coffee house. But for the most part, that's what we have is uh, Starbucks house blend. And um, Starbucks just came out with a new coffee that I'm really anxious to try. Actually, it's a whole new line of coffees. Starbucks Natural Fusions with natural flavors. So I bought this little bag of the vanilla yesterday, but I haven't opened it or tried it yet. But then another coffee that we have been enjoying lately is the uh, Newman's Own Organic Coffee. And... Um, Mm, I can smell it through the bag. Um, we had stopped at McDonald's one morning. Uh, we ended up uh, having breakfast out. So we decided to get those one of those uh, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches at McDonald's. And we got the coffee, and I was really shocked at how good it was. And, of course, McDonald's brews Newman's Own. So I picked up a bag of that to have at home, too. And uh, that's a collaboration with Green Mountain Coffee Company and Newman's Own. So those two companies together make this coffee, and it's really good. It doesn't taste like Starbucks, but it's a really, really good coffee. If I can't have uh, Starbucks, I definitely would want Newman's Own. Um, anything but Dunkin' Donuts. I, I can't stand Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, and I'm sorry for anybody that likes Dunkin' Donuts. You know, no offense, but everybody likes different things, right? We all have our own tastes. So that's my September favorites, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.